Navimo sponsored this video and sent me their newest model, the i2 all-wheel drive series. They're claiming it's wire-free, it self-matched your zones, it has turf-safe turning with their zero-turn all-wheel drive system, and it comes with an intuitive app. Could this be the best robotic mower of 2026? On paper, this looks easy enough that anyone can use it. They asked for the test, you be the judge. Let's get to the unboxing. Now, if you're not familiar with the robotic lawn mowing industry, the i-Series will go out and mow pre-programmed areas of your lawn, so you don't have to. Matter of fact, if it runs low on charge or completes the mowing task, it'll even take itself back to the charger, recharge, then resume where it left off, leaving it a hands-off experience. The i-Series comes as a complete kit. We get the EFLS antenna system, we get the charging station, and of course, the Navimo i-Series all-wheel drive. Now, if you're a fan of Navimo, then you would know that this machine looks very similar to the previous generation that they had out there. However, a lot of updates that have occurred. Number one, it's all wheel drive, but number two, self mapping, which means you don't even have to walk it around your yard. If you have an enclosed area, it's gonna identify the grass versus the surrounding boundaries, and it's gonna completely map itself. Now I'm excited to get to the fun stuff. We're gonna let the Navimo map itself in the front and the backyard and see how well that actually works. Let's talk about what Navimo is promising us about the i2 all wheel drive series. Navimo says this is a no wire setup with auto mapping and it uses network RTK plus vision. They also position this as the only all wheel drive mower in its class for mid to small lawns. Now on size, the i206 all wheel drive is rated for 0.15 acres, which is about 6,534 square feet. The i210 all wheel drive is rated for 0.25 acres, which is about 10,890 square feet. So Navimo also lists a continuous mapping area per day of 0.37 acres or about 16,000 117 square feet. So for navigation, the locating system is listed as EFLS NRTK, shown as NRTK plus vision. So for obstacle detection, they list vision fence with a 140 degree RGB camera, and they claim it avoids pets and obstacles on its own. For terrain performance, they list the driving engine as three all wheel drive. They also call out grass friendly zero turn steering, meaning smooth turns that help prevent scraping and keep the lawn intact. And they list an an adaptive drive that can engage a third wheel on challenging terrain for up to 30% energy savings. They also call out TSC and ESC for stability on uneven and complex grounds. Now, as far as cutting width of the deck goes, 7.1 inches and cutting heights that range from two to 3.6 inches. Cutting height adjustments listed as manual and they also have five blades on the deck now. For slope capability, they list a maximum slope ability of 45% or 24 degrees, which is pretty steep. And for battery and charging, the i206 all-wheel drive is listed with the 2.6 amp hour battery and a 60 minute charge time. The i210 all-wheel drive is listed with a 5.1 amp battery and a 120 minute charge time. They also list 59 decibels for noise, IP66 for protection level against water, and they show 4G connectivity as available on both the i206 all-wheel drive and the i210. 10 all wheel drive. So the real question is, how does it perform? Mapping's done. And I gotta say for an automatic mapper, probably the fastest automatic mapper that I've used up to date. It literally zoomed around my front yard in about uh, two minutes, did my entire backyard in an additional two, two and a half minutes. So five minutes later here, we're up and going. Royce, you impressed buddy? No! Eh, he's never impressed. But what are you gonna do? <laughs> Let's start the mode. Thank you. 
Now, as far as how many times per week you should be letting your lawnmower run, I like to let mine run at least three to five days per week, depending on the time of the year and the growing habits of the grass. Keep in mind, they have blades on the bottom that are really meant to take a tiny little bit of grass off of the top. Now, these blades, I switch mine off about every three to five weeks on average, or about every 20 to 40 mows. Now, the best part is the blades are double-sided, so you can simply just flip it over to get additional maintenance out of one blade. One concern that always comes up is I don't see that cutting very much off the top. And the fact of the matter is, is this is a maintenance mower that's meant to mulch the grass. So it takes tiny little bits off of the top so you don't have to bag it afterwards. Now it is capable of taking up to a half an inch of grass off the top. The i2 series all wheel drive that I have has a height of cut options that range from two inches on up to three and a half inches of height of cut. So I've got it on this lawn that I call the maintenance lawn that I use. It has Kentucky bluegrass and right now we've got it set at about 2.4 inches height of cut and the mow quality has been really good. And I'd say one of my all time favorite things about this really is just the striping capabilities that you get out of this mower. It just gives you that nice fresh cut. Now they made some really good changes inside the application. Not only can you change the mow direction, but you can choose the mow degrees. It looks almost like a compass and I haven't seen this in the past and it's working really, really well. It makes it very easy to choose which direction that you want to cut. If you want to cut horizontal and vertical, you can now choose that even in the same day and do separate mows, get that nice checker stripe pattern and it's very easy. Now, if we just browse through the application, you're gonna notice you've got your mow schedule. You can now mow at night. Obstacle avoidance can be affected a little bit by this, not a big deal. You've got your map management and you've got your vision fence and your trash control system. You can actually turn on and off. So it says when enabled, the mower will tackle wet, muddy and other complex terrains with ease when it works autonomously. This improves stability and trash control of the mower, reducing chances of getting stuck and avoiding damages to your lawn. Now, one thing that I will tell you about this all-wheel drive, it works and it works really, really well. So there's a couple of things I really like on the application. Technical support, you can get directly on the app. And if you have any issues, they will chat with you on the app and resolve all the problems. So you don't have to worry about looking up some sort of random number or random website. Very, very easy. Now, when it comes to to just the actual uh, mowing areas and mapping out the areas, you can have really long pathways. So you can see on this one, our pathway to the backyard, it's almost 120 feet over concrete and a little bit of gravel. I did this not only to test out the limits, but because it's a safer path for the lawnmower. Creating boundaries, never been easier with the autonomous mowing setup. And, I, and I'm very excited to report this. It is extremely accurate. Even with this complex lawn, and this massive tree stump that we have here in the front yard. It was really able to not only detect it, but also to map all the way around it with ease. But I find the app is user-friendly enough that anyone can use it. This is a couple of things I really love about this mower, but the, the fact of the matter is, this is a very bumpy lawn. Cut quality is nice and smooth out the back. And again, I absolutely love the stripes. You get fresh dialed in stripes every single time it mows. And as for it being autonomous, I was a little concerned about the three wheel drive and how well it would function. It's absolutely slanted. it. You see it coming over these ridges that have not only an incline here, but it's got a dip here where the root comes in and nothing slows it down and it's keeping such a nice straight line. Let's play a game, shall we? The obstacle avoidance challenge. We take daily household objects and we put them on the lawn to see if the I2 all wheel drive can avoid them. The whole point of the obstacle avoidance challenge is just see how far we can push the machine and what its capabilities are. So let's talk about this vision fence technology or the camera technology it's using to avoid the obstacles. So here's what I'm noticing when it comes to the obstacle avoidance. Large materials, no problem. So when you have something the size of a helmet, it avoids it just fine. We can dip down into a small size cone, still no problem. Even the flatness and the size of this golf head cover, no problem. So I dipped even lower. We got into this guava jelly canister, which is about four and a half, five inches wide and about an uh, inch and a half thick. No problem. But the 
second that I dip into anything that is less than three inches in either diameter or height, it's not going to pick it up, which means that on your lawn, if you have a few smaller items, you're still gonna need to pick those up. Now, here's the amazing part of what I'm finding. Check this out. You noticing anything? Look at these awesome stripes. It kept its pattern the entire time, no matter how many obstacles that I put down. It literally wired itself to go back and fix the stripes. Not to mention this version appears to be a little bit faster when it actually avoids obstacles. Look at this, no matter how quick I get in here, it avoids it. And so there's been a couple of updates that are really, really impressive. Now it will also double check the line pattern and if an obstacle is still there. So it's almost as if it's timing itself out, gonna readjust itself and figure out what area is straight and also what it's actually missed or needs to go back to get. Very impressive. I feel like we've tested most of the specifications that Navimo has to offer, but there's just one more. It's that thing on the box that says the antenna is not necessary, but then it came with an antenna. So how did that work out? Well, believe it or not, we've been running this entire segment with the obstacle avoidance and everything else included, and I decided to unplug the antenna. So a lot of you guys are probably wondering, how does this work? If the EFLS system is not necessarily plugged in, then what is it running off of? Well, it has a chipset built into it, so it's running off of the satellites and 4G towers. So that way you don't necessarily have to have the antenna. So for those of you guys who have open spaces, this is going to be a fantastic option for you. But I will say, having tested this out, one food for thought is you have to be very careful with how close you are to the soffits and roof line. You really need an open area for docking the machine. But for lighter areas that have a few scattered trees here and there, so far between the vision fence and the EFLS system, that's built in, it's working as it should. But look at this, not only is it not plugged in to the uh, EFLS antenna, but these stripes, again, are just looking awesome. It's gonna my favorite part of the video, which is going over the pros and the cons. Now, first off, I'm a big fan of the design. Two tires in the front with almost no front lip or rear lip means it doesn't get stuck often. Now, I was a bit concerned about the all-wheel drive tearing up the lawn, but so far it's performing flawlessly. And when it hit bumps, ruts, it got itself out of trouble. And when it hit the slope sides of the massive tree stump, also had no problems getting itself out of trouble, not to mention their turf safe zero turn. It actually works. It is so light on all the transition. It turns on a dime and handled slopes up to the 24 degrees that they're promising. So one thing about that is, is this machine, it's not fast, which is part of the reasons why it's limited to 0.37 acres per day. It's by design, not a big deal, considering that it's a robot and it's just going to do its thing throughout the day. But I found that I went through about 80 to 85% of the battery per 1,000 square feet. Charge time smashed the market at one hour on the i206, then it went back to doing its task. But as the specifications show on the i206 that I have, it cut up to the specified 0.15 acres per day. One cool thing about the update is now you can mow at night. They included a night override. So if you want to get the most out of the machine, you can. Just know that your obstacle avoidance may take a hit running the machine at night, considering the camera is not gonna be able to see everything. Now, as for the software, super easy to use. With the click of a button, not only can you start a mow, but you can customize what areas and the order of areas that you want to mow. They've added options to enable mowing at night and turn the trash control system on or off. And in the map management section, you can set your mow direction and even set what direction you want it to mow on the next mow, which one of my very favorite features is being able to change the mow direction after every single mow and Navi mow nailed it. It's built like a compass now and it's pretty logical to use. So you're not gonna have any issues just guessing. But if I were to nitpick the product, just know that the height of cut adjustments, they're static, meaning you can only adjust them from the machine, which means that you can't change the heights of cut through the app or per zone unless you go and manually change it. Now I've been using the i1 series for a little over a year and a half now. What I can tell you about the predecessor to the i2 all-wheel drive, the i1 series is one of the most hands-off autonomous robotic lawnmower that I've tested thus far. The satellites in the sky from Navimo are pretty on point. Rarely have had any issues with that. This one has some upgrades that validate upgrading even from the i1 series. 
I was a little hesitant on the all wheel drive because I've had other models that were all wheel drive. And eventually we either had rutting in the lawn where the software just felt a little bit off and it was still getting stuck in the lawn. With this one, even with the tree stump and everything included, we haven't had any issues with it getting stuck on any of the lawns that I've been putting this on. It has been just as consistent as the first i-series, which is really, really excited. But if you're interested in the i2 all-wheel drive, I will post the link of the product in the description of the video. In the meantime, guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me up down in the comments down below. You know I'd love to help you guys out. Until next time, guys, the best in lawn, Juju. We're slaying lawns.